Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. Today is Thursday, it's episode number 38 in our 10th week of the Model 3 Tip of the Week series. We looked at 12 best practices regarding charging to help you get a longer lifespan out of your car's battery. Well, today is a very different topic, but before we start, when we were kids, we used to play a little game called Spot the Difference. Basically, you'd have two pictures side by side. Each picture would have slight differences, and the game was to try and see how many differences you could find. So take a look behind me. Spot the difference? Anything that wasn't that way yesterday? Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's not the guitars. So here it is, to my shame. I'm not a great planned person. I didn't neglect my children like that when they were growing up. So today we're going to talk about something quite different. There's always a lot of talk about Big Brother and we're being watched. I don't know how much you're going to love your Model 3 after this, because when you're in your Tesla Model 3, Big Brother is watching you all the time. And so that brings us to the subject today of telematics. Telematics. The data that is constantly being recorded by all of the systems, all of the electronic modules in the car. Everything is recording sets of data. And that data, from time to time, gets transmitted to Tesla. It gets recorded in our car. It can be accessed by service personnel when they're taking a look at your car. And you tell them, I've never driven this thing above 120K. And they say, hmm, last week you were going 180. So where do they get that from? Telematics. I just want to run through the kind of information that is being gathered. What use Tesla puts it to? Is this a good or a bad thing? Is this something that is ultimately more helpful to us? Something that is neutral, perhaps? Or something that is really bad for us and we shouldn't allow it? So let me just read this little paragraph from the user manual in the North American manual. It's page 206. And it says, Model 3 is equipped with electronic modules that monitor and record data from various vehicle systems. And here they list some of them. The motor, the autopilot components, the battery, the braking system, and all electrical systems. The electronic modules record information about various driving and vehicle conditions, including braking, acceleration, trip, and other related information regarding your vehicle. Listen to this. The modules also record information about the vehicle's features, such as charging events, status, the enabling or disabling of various systems. So when you turn off your lane assist or lane keeping assist, they know you turned it off. So they understand when you enable or disable various of the safety features. How about this one? Diagnostic trouble codes. Well, that sounds pretty useful if they can spot what's going wrong. Your VIN, your speed, your direction, your location. Now, we did learn before when we talked about EDR, the electronic data recorder, the Tesla does not store your location, etc., etc. But it appears that the telematics actually do, although they might store it in car. They store speed, direction, and location. Does it frighten you to understand the depth and the extent of how much information Tesla is recording? What are some of the uses to which it's put? And does it help us? Does it harm us? Or is it something completely unrelated to us and it's just Elon wanting to control the information? Let's have a look at the first piece of information about how it's used. It says here, the data is stored by the vehicle and it might be accessed and used and stored by Tesla service technicians during vehicle servicing, or it might be periodically transmitted to Tesla wirelessly through the vehicle's telematics system. So clearly, a lot of that information, and I suspect particularly the diagnostic stuff, is accessed and can be accessed whenever you take your car in for a service, but it can also be sent wirelessly. Now, I'll give you one example of where that was helpful to me. I know that before the technician came out to check my frunk. The frunk had locked, couldn't get into it. I can't remember what I had in there, but yeah, it was my drone. Couldn't get to it. They sent a technician out, and the first thing he said to me was this. He says, um, listen, we've also checked your system diagnostics. 
and we've discovered that your trunk has a module that is also in need of replacement, and so we're going to do it at the same time. And they proceeded to fix the trunk and to fix the trunk latch, and I got a new one in both. Well, is that helpful to me or harmful to me? Pretty helpful. I was very impressed. When I took the car in to get um, something else looked at, I remember they again said to me, listen, we've just checked the diagnostics and it looks like what we need to do is flash update your firmware because it hasn't been updating through the regular update procedures. So they did it. That was great. Came away with a car where the firmware was now updated and after that, software updates took place naturally. So look, I think we've got to be reasonable here. We're living in an electronic era. We have a car that is almost completely software and electronics based. Lots of data is going to be generated. If that data can be used to benefit us, to help in the servicing of our car, to help in the improvement of its features, I'm all for it. Now, there is a scary part to it. And we've got to look at the end of this little section in the manual to find out exactly what it is. Let me go there right now. So let's just take a look at, again, a continuation of the good, the benefit of this system to us. I'll read from the paragraph that says, this data may be used by Tesla for various purposes, including, but not limited to, whenever you see that, you know that there's more, but including the following, troubleshooting, evaluation of your vehicle's quality, functionality, and performance, analysis and research by Tesla and its partners for the improvement and design of our vehicles and systems, or may be used to defend Tesla and as otherwise required by the law. In servicing a vehicle, Tesla can potentially resolve issues remotely simply by reviewing your vehicle's data log. That's the part I like. There's the good part. So it's a carrot and a stick. A carrot, we can solve your problems remotely. A stick, we may use it to defend ourselves against you and the way you drove and the accident you had and the fact that you're blaming us for things. We will use the data to defend ourselves. I don't begrudge Tesla from doing that. In fact, they'd be dumb if they didn't. Every manufacturer of all kinds of products becomes the target for all kinds of lawsuits, class action suits. Tesla would be crazy to not be in a position to be able to grab that data and say, look, this is not true. What they're saying didn't happen. Here are the facts. So, you know, it's a good thing because I think the insurance industry has encountered so much fraud. If people realize they cannot just file a false baseless claim against Tesla, because Tesla can prove that they're lying, that'll help all of us because it will drop the incidence of fraudulent claims, that will drop the cost of our insurance, and that's good for us, it's good for the industry. So how often does this happen? Well, it says here, Tesla's telematic system wirelessly transmits vehicle information to Tesla on a periodic basis. Right? Doesn't really tell us. Could be once a month. Is it, is it annually? Is it every night when we think our car has gone to sleep? It's sitting there in the dragon cave, sending information back to Tesla? Could be. I don't know. The data is used as previously described. In other words, to help us and to help Tesla. Additional Model 3 features may use your vehicle's telematic system and the information provided, including features such as charging reminders that you get software updates that we love to get, remote access to and control of your vehicle's functions that we love to exercise through the Tesla app. That's all good. Now, here's how it closes. Tesla does not disclose the data recorded in your vehicle to any third party, period. Oh no, wait, there is no period there. Tesla does not disclose the data recorded in your vehicle to any third party except when, firstly, an agreement or consent with the vehicle's owner is obtained. So how, how do we give that consent? 
we give that consent when we agree to the terms and conditions that come up in the various control modules in our control settings when you enable autopilot and you say I do this at my own risk when you say auto steer uh, lane assist keeping we give assent to those features and that has given Tesla the consent from us the owner number two we release the data when we are officially requested by the police or other authorities. Other authorities? I don't know. Does that include insurance companies? Because in British Columbia, the insurance company is owned by the province. Number three, data is released as a defense for Tesla. So if you're fighting that lawsuit against Tesla, you better believe they'll come at you with the big guns. They'll come at you with all of the information gathered and gleaned from the vehicle's telematics system. Number four, we release the data when we're ordered by a court of law. So if the, if the courts say, Tesla, you have to release the information, they will. And finally, we release it when it's used for research purposes without disclosing details of the actual vehicle owner or identification information so that our identities are protected. In other words, it's anonymous data. It's anonymized in order to provide statistics and information for the improvement and the betterment of the car and various associated systems, but it doesn't include our personal information. So there we go. Uh, are we afraid of Big Brother? Well, in general terms, yeah, Big Brother is a, is a very scary concept, but Tesla Big Brother? Eh, why don't we rather think of it as a kind Big Brother who looks after our interests? who's always there, who has our back, who's looking to make the car better, a wonderful, gentle, kind big brother. I don't know. If you think different, why don't you put your comments in the section below. So, um, yeah, that's the last tip of the day for this week. And as I promised, I've given you the four tips, even though I was a little bit late in uploading. Thank you again for going the extra mile to share information with me, for the questions you ask which so often lead to um, new ideas for tip of the day. Just want to say thank you again for those who use my referral code. Um, on the 19th and the 20th, two separate people bought a Model 3 and used the referral code. And for those that are thinking of buying a car, here's the referral code. Uh, what does it actually give you? Well, it gives you 1,000 miles or 1,500K of free supercharging after you take delivery of the car. So we'll see you, enjoy your weekend, take care of yourselves, see you then.